But Jesus, we are grateful, Lord, to have a day like this. Father, today many people say Happy Father's Day. Perhaps it's a day that has been set aside to remember the work of the fathers. We have a father that's more than every father. And so each day, Lord, we say thank you for being our father. Our Heavenly Father thinks of us every day. There's no particular day that he's not taking of us. Every moment, every second of our life, he is mindful. The Lord Jesus said, your father, he created the birds of the earth, but the birds do not toil. And our Father provides for them. If our Father can take care of the birds, could He not take care of us? And so we know He's always thinking about us. What a God we have. What a mighty God we have. And in this day, He has revealed Himself unto us. He has shown us plainly who that He is, so that we are no longer confused. My Lord, my God, here we are, Lord, today. As many as they are that are here, Lord, we have appointed for them to be here today. We are grateful for that, Lord. And for those who are not here for one reason or the other, may you bless them, Lord. Wherever they are, may they be blessed as well. All the churches that are open today, all the missing churches open all over the world, may you come in, my Lord. May you worship with them, Lord. May you fulfill their need, Lord. May you anchor them upon thee, Lord. May they cry not to be in vain, Lord. May you come, Lord, and just show thyself to them and comfort each one. We are under expectation, my Lord. On this part of the earth, on this part of New Jersey, where are we gather, Lord? We know we are not a game of number, but we have thee, Lord Jesus. And if we have you, Lord Jesus, we are comforted. We are comfortable. We are happy. Only one word you will say to us, Lord, will be so encouraging. May you speak to us, Lord, in such a way we know we have communion with you this afternoon. May you speak to us, my Lord. I am under expectation. I know you will do it. It will not be in vain that we have gathered. We gather under your name. May you come, my Lord. May you speak to us, my Lord. We are under expectation. We ask for thanksgiving. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Deborah Patrick just texted me earlier this morning and said that the sister that came here, that they didn't look at their time very well, that they ought to be where they are going by 9 o'clock today. So he has to go to drop them this morning. So he might come late. Or we see if he comes, it's fine. If not, we thank God for everything. Amen? Amen. This morning, our message is the mighty God unveiled before us. The mighty God unveiled before us. Prophet preach different title of this message. There's one he called the unveiling of God. But we want to think of the mighty God unveiled before us. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, God can be unveiled, but perhaps not before you. You might hear it, but in this case, we are saying it's unveiled before us. Amen? Amen. So it's no longer a history. We take a couple of scriptures. Prophet we'll used uh, the uh, Second Corinthians to start the message. So let's go to Second Corinthians 3. We're going to read from verse 1, and then after verse 1, you have your seats, then I continue. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need, as some others, epistle of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle written in our hearts known and read of all men. And the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. You may I have your seats while I continue. 
For as much as you are manifestedly declared, see, manifested and declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the earth. And such trust have we through Christ to God word. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who has had made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Amen. 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 We are seeking life this morning. Amen. But in the ministration of death, written, engraved in stone, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses. For the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away? Keep it there for a second, sister. We can continue, but keep it there. Let's look at this very well. See what Paul is trying to tell us. Remember, we are talking about the mighty God of veil before us. Paul is writing here in 2 Corinthians. If the administration of death, because the law brings death, this is the ministration of law, and the law brought death. So Paul is saying, if that ministration of death, which was engraved in stone, the law was written in stone, but yet it was glorious. Hallelujah. In other words, Paul is saying, God was manifested. God was even unveiled in the ministration of the law written in stone. See, but the children of Israel they could not even look at the face of Moses. Because when Moses goes to speak to God and comes back, there's a veil before him. So the children of Israel cannot even look at his face. Because of the, the glory of God, because of the Shekinah glory, they could not behold the face of Moses. He was veiled. Hallelujah. But when Moses goes to speak to God, he takes away the veil and speak to God. But when he comes down from the mountain, they are veiled before him. Because the children of Israel could not look at his face. His face is shining. His face can blind you. Because the glory of God before him. Hallelujah. And the glory of his countenance, which was glory, but yet this glory was to be done away with. Hallelujah. So despite the glory, despite the manifestation, that's why the unveiling of God through the law by the stones that were written, not in the heart of men. Paul is saying that still had to be done away with. Let's go to it. How shall not the ministration now of the Spirit be rather glorious? Hallelujah. So the ministration of the law, the ministration of the letter, because the law was the letter was glorious, but it brought even death, but the ministration of the Spirit, which come by the Lord Jesus, how could that not be glorious? Hallelujah. Yeah. Because remember, we started with Paul saying, you are written a pistol to be read by all men. He's trying to tell you how glorious you are, even compared to the glory of the law when Moses was going to the mountain and coming down. How glorious was that law, but the glory of the Spirit is even more than the glory that was brought by the law. Hallelujah. Yeah. For the administration of condemnation. What is the administration of condemnation? The law. The law condemns. Hallelujah. The law of God condemned everyone. No one was able to escape the law. Even the lawgiver was condemned by the law. Moses, who brought the law, was condemned by the same law. And that's why he had to die. Hallelujah. Amen. No one was able to fulfill the law except one. But that law, the administration of condemnation, was glorious. 
much more than that the ministry of righteousness exceeding glory. Now, Paul is comparing now. He's comparing the ministration of condemnation that was glorious. But he's saying to you that how much more do you think the ministration of life, the ministration of our spirit, for even that which was made glorious had no glory in its respect by reason by of the glory that excels. 11. Hallelujah. For if that which is done away was glorious, what was done away with? The law. Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. Hallelujah. So the law is done away with. If that law was glorious, how much more is this glory we're talking about this morning? Seeing that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. We don't want to complicate it. Not as Moses, which put a veil. See that? Moses put a veil over his face. Hallelujah. Amen. Children of Israel could not look to the end of that which is abolished. See, when Moses comes down from the mountain again, he has a veil. Children of Israel could not look at it. But their minds were blinded until this day. Remaining the same veil or taken away in the reading of the Old Testament. So, even until now, as the children of Israel read the Old Testament, Paul is saying, the veil is still there. They still cannot see. That's why they were blinded for the Gentiles' sake. The children of Israel were blinded for the Gentiles' sake. Hallelujah. And when the days of Gentiles are over, their eyes will be open. Hallelujah. It is then they will realize that Jesus Christ is God. At the feast, hallelujah, of the trumpet, they will realize, and then they will go into other feasts, like the feast of atonement and the tabernacle. Hallelujah. But yet, they are blinded today because of you and I. You see, let's go to 15. But as even up to this day, even today, when Moses is read, the veil is still upon their heart. Nevertheless, when they shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. When they shall know the Lord, anyone that has known Jesus Christ, the veil is taken away. If you don't know him, the veil is still there. So mighty God has not been unveiled before that person. Remember the message is, mighty God unveiled before us. To the children of Israel, Mighty God was unveiled, but they were blinded. They could not see. They could not see the mighty God being unveiled before them. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we have a spirit here? Amen. 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 All we need is the spirit of God. And everything else, he will put in order. Amen. Hallelujah. But we all, with open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord. They are changing to the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We love the Lord. Amen. So we are talking about the glory of the Lord. When his veil was being unveiled before his people. See, the prophet in that message, he also read, the book of second in the book of Philippians. Let's go to that scripture. Philippians. Philippians 2. That was the two scripture used by the prophet to preach the message. We left foundation and then we teach a little bit and preach a little bit and we go home. Hallelujah. Amen. If there be anything, there be therefore any consolation in Christ. If there's any comfort of love, if there's any fellowship of the spirit. If there is any power and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own faith, but every man also on the face of others. 
that his mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But he made himself of no reputation, and look upon him the form of a, of a servant. He took upon him the form of a servant. He was made the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also had highly exalted him, giving him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Wherefore, my beloved, as we have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but not much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and without disputing, that ye may be blameless and blameless, the sons of God with your rebuke in the midst of crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. Jesus Christ is a name above all names. See, why is that the name above all names? God from ages has always veiled himself. God has always hidden himself. In that message, God unveiled before us. Prophet talked about God in the days of Job. When Job was asking for God, when Job was saying he wished he can find where God is, he can knock at his door and talk it over with him. And the prophet said, then God found himself and appeared before Job. Then he appeared as a wild wind. God appeared before Job while veiling himself. He covered himself into a wind and he spoke to Job as a whirlwind. That was God veiling himself. Hallelujah. Amen. He was hiding himself. And in the days of Moses, when Moses was in the wilderness, God appeared as a burning bush. That bush was burning, was not consumed. And God spoke to that bush. Hallelujah. Amen. God fell himself and spoke to the body bush. And it was the voice of God that spoke to Moses. But God fell himself. And then Moses at some point, he desired to see God. He said, God, I want to see you. And God told him, no man has ever seen me, Moses. But because Moses was beloved of God, he spoke mouth to mouth to Moses. So God promised to Moses to watch upon a rock. He is going to walk past the cliff of a rock. And God turned back and walked back. And Moses said, I saw the backpack of God. And he looked at the backpack of a man. And God still feared himself. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said, no man has ever seen God except the begotten of God that came from God. So for ages, no man has ever seen God. God always fell on himself. Even when he appeared to Abraham, he still veiled himself. Hallelujah. Amen. He always hide himself. Hallelujah. God has always veiled himself. And when the Greek one day came when Jesus was preaching, he said to Philip, Saul, we want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. They are so much of Jesus, they want to see him. And when they came, what did they see? They saw the walk of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They saw the work of Jesus. But Jesus said unto him, He said, Except a kind of wheat we die, he will abide alone. Hallelujah. For Jesus was prophesying of how God will unveil himself before us. Hallelujah. Amen. That the mighty God has come in the body of a man. In the days of Moses. Hallelujah. There was a badger skin. And God told Moses, this badger 
can have to separate the Holy of the Holies, hallelujah, from within sanctuary. And no one can go in there. For God was hiding himself behind the packer's skin, And no one can see him. And the prophet said, on the days of Moses, to go behind the veil is death. For God told Moses, even Aaron cannot come behind at that time. No one can come behind. God said to Moses, let this veil hide me from the people. I'll sit on the message throne, but no one can see me. I'll speak from inside the Holy of the Holies, but no one can see me. God was hiding himself. To go behind the veil when the time of Moses is death. Hallelujah. But there come a time when the prophet said, not to go in into the veil is death today. Then to go in into the veil is death. Today, not to go in into the veil is death. Did you get it? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you catch it? Now, what is the prophet saying here? We should read it in a minute. Prophet is saying, on the days of Moses, no one is allowed to come through the veil. No one. When you come through the veil, is death. Hallelujah. That was when the law was written on the stone. But today, when Jesus died, he read the veil in two. Hallelujah. And you cannot go into the veil. So if you stay outside the veil today, it's death. Hallelujah. Because it's a change of dispensation. Hallelujah. When Jesus was here, he could not preach the message of Noah. Because for him to preach the message of Noah was outside the dispensation of Noah. Hallelujah. So when Jesus was here, he had a message to deliver. And that is why the mighty God had been unveiled before us in the message of the hour. And he has blinded the people. They cannot see. Hallelujah. That's why sometimes you see the church in the condition that it is. Because it's not for everyone. They have come and seen and they got blinded again. Because the veil is still in their face. They cannot see beyond the veil. Hallelujah. And for you that can see behind the veil, you count yourself, as Apostle Paul said, you are written a pistol to be read by all men. Hallelujah. The things of this world have taken away from you. You are no longer who you used to be because mighty God has been unveiled before you and you have accepted it. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah. When Jesus died, oh, the veil was read into Matthew 27, 15 to 51. Matthew 27, 15 to 51. Oh, what happened to that veil? Oh, the veil has been removed. Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was ran in two from the top to the bottom. And the earth did shake, did quake, and the rocks did rent. Hallelujah. When Jesus died, that veil has been removed. Hallelujah. And there's a reason for him to remove that veil. The prophet said that Jesus came first. He was veiled as the son of man. The first coming of Jesus. God was veiled in Jesus as the son of man. In the office of a prophet. But it was God that was veiled in that office as the son of man. Hallelujah. But Jesus when he died. The veil in the temple was ready too. And Jesus said, I'm coming back as the Son of God. When he came back as the Son of God, it is not for him to dwell in the flesh of man. Hallelujah. So we became the dwelling place of God. So there's no more veil. We are now the dwelling place of God. And it was manifested through the promise and the ministry of the seven angel messenger to prove to us that we are the temple of God. God brought such a man as William Mario Brenner to manifest every attribute that God said that he is. No longer he was, he is. Because when Moses came to God, God said to Moses, I am that I am. And God has failed, but I'm a present tense God. See me, but I am there with them. But I am there before them. They might not see me, but I am walking.
walking around them. But today, he's no longer walking around us. He's walking inside of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The mighty God has been unveiled in the life of a believer to walk inside of a believer. Blessed be the name of the living God. Amen. Lord, we are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. In Exodus 26, 33, that's a veil. Exodus 26, 33, the veil was present. Exodus 26, 33. How shall I not the veil, say the Lord, unto the touches? How may I bring Tina within the veil of the act of the testimony? The veil shall divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy. That was the veil. That divine call from the people. People could not come within the veil. To come within the veil is death. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, the Lord appeared in the cloud in Leviticus 6, 16, 2. Even Aaron cannot come within the veil. Leviticus 16, 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother. He come not at all times into the holy place, within the veil, before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, and he die not, for I will appear in a cloud upon the mercy seat. Hallelujah! He veiled himself, but appeared as a cloud upon the mercy seat to do what he promised to do. Hallelujah! And when Solomon had finished building the temple, and Solomon was commissioned in the temple. The Bible told us God unveiled himself as a cloud, and the place was filled with a cloud, and nobody can see each other. It was the glory of God that was veiled in that cloud and came into the temple, and nobody could walk in, nobody can come out, nobody can see each other. The glory of God was there as it is before us. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name Amen. of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, in the book of Hebrews 10, let us enter boldly. Give me Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 from verse 19. We are entering boldly inside the veil. Hallelujah. Amen. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, he had consecrated us. Through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Because it was the flesh of Jesus that was the veil of God when he was here bodily. But the fullness of God was in Jesus bodily. Hallelujah. Having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And our body washed with pure water. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith with our weapon. Don't shake. For it's faith that was promised. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us consider one another to provoke unto the law and to do good works. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us enter, my brother and sister. Because the veil has been read in two. It's now for the bride to go in. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Bless be that name of the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We love the Lord. Oh, God was in well wound. God was there in the backside. Jehovah in the Old Testament is Jesus of the New Testament. Hallelujah. Amen. Prophet gave us stories. Said there was a king who played what you can call an undercover king. There is some show they have out there. It's called the undercover boss. And then what the prophet told the story is similar to that show in question. For the prophet is telling us of a king who told his subject. He said, I want to take away my, 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 my garment as a king and, and my staff and, and my crown. I want to be like one of you for a couple of days. And the people say, oh, king, don't do that. They say, that's, he said, that's what I want to do. And that caused me to remember, there is a show they have out there. It's called the undercover boss. 
In that little show, they usually have people, it's a business owner, can just come and change himself and mask himself. You won't recognize him. He will go and walk with the people. He can walk like a cleaner. He can be cleaning the floor and talking to you. You wouldn't know that's the owner of the company. And you're telling him things. And later he will change himself again and let you know who he is. Hallelujah. It's a good show out there sometimes. You can, you know, but what is that telling us? The prophet said that's what Christ did. He said God in Christ was acting like that undercover boss. The undercover king. But he was God in flesh. Amen. That was speaking to man. He was God in flesh that was one of us. He was God in flesh that was common and ordinary. He was God in flesh that they spit on and, and shouted on. He was God in flesh that slapped. He was God in flesh that put that crown of thorn. He was God in flesh that nailed on the cross. Hallelujah. He was God hiding himself in simplicity. But he failed himself to the babies. But to the wise and prudent, he hides himself. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. Thank you, Jesus. Prophet also told the story of a little boy in this message. Said this little boy was afraid. He was so afraid of thunder and lightning. And on that day, it was raining and thunder and was lightning. And this little boy was crying and crying. And the mom said, what can I do for you? He said, Mama, can you come and lend this to me? And then the mother came and lend this to him. And the mother told him, he said, son, don't be scared. God is with us. God is protecting us. God will not let the tongue do anything to you. The little boy said to the mother, Mama, I know, but I like to see God with a little skin. I like to see God with their skin on him. That's the way he put it. The mother said, the little boy said, Mama, I like to see God with their skin in him. What does that mean? The little boy said, Mama, I believe what you say, but when you're near me, I can touch you as the one God has sent to protect me. So that's God with skin. Hallelujah! We receive God with skin. After Jesus left this earth, the earth was still fine with the work of God. Hallelujah! There was no prophet in the land. And God said, I will send you Elijah, the prophet. He was God with a skin. He was God with a skin. Why? He was the Son of God manifested in a son of God. The Son of Man is manifested. The Son of Man manifested in a son of man. Hallelujah. He was God in a skin. There was a testimony of Mr. Osborne that said that God walked in the walls of America. And when Brother Abraham was walking, God walked in the streets of America. Why? Because the thing that God said that will manifest was manifested in the ministry of the message of the hour, showing that Jesus Christ is truly the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, we've got nothing to worry about. Amen. No situation can worry a believer. Nothing. Amen. Just keep moving on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You wake up every day, worship him. Amen. You come to church, worship him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't look left and right, worship him. Glory. Amen. Because there is a reward for our effort. There's a reward for our faith. If our faith is diligent, if we diligently seek him, he will be our God. We will be his sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Let's read a little bit of the message. Kind of live early today. So if you have any further things to do, we'll do it. Your Lord. See the message of the hour. Prophet said, Oh, he was talking about being a real American. Oh, he talked about how as a real American, so he is 
also. I love the way he put it. Why don't I read it with you? Then we go back down. I love the way he put it. In the message, the mighty God unveiled. Hallelujah before us. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Today we say he's a historical God. We know he crossed the Red Sea. He did all this. The fiery furnace with the Hebrew children. What good is a God of history? He is in the same today. Man is ever glorifying God for what he did. Do thinking of what he will do. They ignore what he is doing. Ask Justin a man to do that. And it is the same thing today, my brethren. It is the same thing, oh my. Let's get back and get a symphony playing right. Where the whole world can see Jesus. If I be lifted up from earth, I will draw all men to me. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let the directors get in the right spirit with the musicians, with the composer, with everything that will be all right. There's no guesswork about it. We identify with him in Hebrews 13, 8. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We identify with him in Acts chapter 2. We identify with him the same baptism. All he was, what all he, he is, and that's exactly it. Just like I want to be a true American. I've got to be identified with everything she was. Everything she is, I've got to be identified with it. I am a true American, said the prophet. If I am a true American, then I landed on Plymouth Rock. Amen. I did. If I am an American, so did you. You landed on Plymouth Rock with the pilgrim's father. On Plymouth Rock, when they landed out there, I was in there with them. So was you, everyone. I rode with Paul River right down the road to warn her of danger. That's exactly right. Right down here at Valley Forge, I crossed the icy Delaware with a bunch of soldiers who half of them didn't even have shoes on. I prayed all night with John Washington beforehand. I crossed the Delaware with a vision in my heart. We are Americans, yes, sir. At Valley Falls, I certainly did. I returned thanks with the original Thanksgiving Father. I returned thanks to God. If I am a real American, I was identified there at the table. If I am a real American, I was identified when I stood with Stonewall Jackson. If I am a real American, I was identified a Boston Tea Party, yes sir. When we refused to have anything put over our eyes. But as a real American, I was identified there with that, yes sir, oh my. I ran to Liberty Bell, the first 4th of July, 1776. I ran to Liberty Bell here and declared that we are independent. To be a real American, I had to. I was identified with that shame in the revolutionary, when brothers fought against brothers. I've got to bear her shame, the shame as I have bear the glory. If I am American, I have to bear it. I was identified with her, yes sir. I was identified at Gettysburg down there when Lincoln made his speech, yes sir. I was on the way Ireland, over them bloody soldiers body. I rose on the way Ireland. On one, I help host the flag. I'm a real American, a man. All she is, I am. I am proud of it. Yes, indeed. All American has been. All she is, I am still that. To be an American. Everything she was, I have to be. Because I'm identified with her. Same thing by a true Christian. You have to be identified with it. I preach with Moses. With Noah. I want the people of the oncoming judgment to be a real Christian. I was with Moses at the burning bush. I saw the pillar of fire. I saw his glory. I was with Moses from there in the wilderness to be a Christian. I have to be identified with a Christian. I have to be identified with everything that God was to be a Christian. I have seen his glory. I have heard his voice. Don't try to explain it away from me now. Because I was there. I know what I am talking about. I have seen what happened. Yes, sir. I was at the Red Sea. 
from one side to another. Not through a bunch of reeds that they are trying to say today, but through about 90 foot sea. I see the Spirit of God. I walk with Moses through the dry ground across the Red Sea. I stood by the Mount Sinai, seeing the thunder and lightning falling. I ate manna with them out there. I drank from the rock. I am still doing it tonight. Hallelujah. I was identified with manna eaters. I was identified with them that drunk from that rock. I was identified with Joshua when he blew the trumpet and the walls of Jericho fell down. I was in the lion's den with Daniel. I was in the fiery forest with the Hebrew children. I was in the mountain with Elijah on Mount Carmel. I was with John the Baptist and before the critics, I had seen the Spirit of God descending. I heard the voice of God say, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased to dwell in. Yes, sir. I am sure I was identified with him. That's exactly right. I was identified with the grave of Lazarus when he raised up Lazarus. I was identified in the woman at the well when he told her her sin. Yes, sir. I was identified with him in his death. I was identified on the first day of Easter. I raised up with him from there. I was identified with him with his death. I was with the 120 in the upper room. I was identified up there with them. Hey, I feel religious brothers. Oh my, I was identified there. I am one of them. Hallelujah. I was identified there. I got the same experience they had. I was there when it happened to be a true Christian. I witnessed that. I felt the power coming. I witnessed that. I felt the power of God as it shook. I was with them that spoke in tongues. I felt the anointing coming there. I was in there. I was identified with them. When the Holy Ghost began to speak to the tongue with them. I was with Peter before the greatest in Acts chapter 2. When he preached the great sermon that he did, I was identified with him, yes sir. In Acts chapter 4, when they assembled together, I was with them. When the body shook, after the prayer meeting, the building shook, when they were sitting, I was identified with them there. I preached with Paul on Mars Hill, yes sir. I was with John on the island of Patmos. I see his second coming. I was with Luther in the Reformation. I was with Wesley, the first hand snatched from the fires when the great revolt against Anglican Church. I was there with him. I am here tonight. Hallelujah. No, no. I am here this afternoon. Hallelujah. No, no. Brother said he was in Pennsylvania. I am here in New Jersey. Hallelujah. In a place called Hackensack, with the believers that God has given to me here. I am here. Yet a little while the world will see me no more. 
you are going to see me. I will fail unto them, but you shall see me, for I will be with you, even in you, all the way to the consummation, changing from Luther, Wesley, and son, from glory to glory, and I'm still on the same car that leaves that I'm going back to the original glory. Hallelujah! Amen. Oh, blessed be the name Amen. of the living God. Amen. Are you identified with him? Amen. You identify with him on his death. You identify with him on his life. Therefore, you identify with him on resurrection. And you identify with him today. Doesn't matter what people say. Doesn't matter what people do. Oh, keep your eyes on the prize. Bless him in the name of the living God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything, Lord. Hallelujah. He has broken everything. I mean, there's no fail. Every psalm barrier that psalm that says, oh, that's for that thing, he broke them right through. The psalm that came out there, he said, oh, all oh, them people are crazy. He broke right through the veil. Oh, you can't do it. You are nothing but a bunch of fanatics. He broke right through that. No such thing as divine healing. He broke right through that. Oh, man, for his word said he would. You can't conquer the word of God. And there he stands yet tonight. The mighty conqueror, since he broke every Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, and every other kind of veil, he still stand among his people tonight, this afternoon, unconquered by tradition. Let people say what they want to say, what they want to say, anything they want to say. But God comes breaking right through that sound barrier. Remember, they tell me when a plane rarely break the sound barrier, there's no limit to the speed of that plane. I am telling you, when you break through the traditional barrier, Jesus Christ is way back, and he isn't now. When you find he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he has no limit to what God could do right here in this place, in this convention that where they are, and show this world that they need not a world's fair, but a world revival that will fail with the baptism of the Pentecost of the living God, and the mouth inviting himself into human flesh. Hallelujah. Broke through every barrier, every veil, every veil, nothing could hide his presence. When people get hungry in their heart, that's a veil ready to break. You can just depend on that. Repent every veil by his Holy Spirit. And yeah, he stands tonight, mighty conqueror, said yesterday, today, and forever, he didn't receive baptism the believer, just as he said he will do. Hallelujah. Two devils are on the road. Yes, sir. They always are. When he's around, hallelujah, hallelujah, the love the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And then the prophet told the story of, of, a, of, a, of an organ, an instrument that somebody had. And he said, this, this instrument, and nobody knows how to play it. He said, there's a story, said the prophet, of an old violinist. He said, he had an old violin. That have been going on to sell, but you heard his story many times, and they wanted to sell it a certain amount of money. They said, Who will be spy for so and so? He said, It was offered for those few coins, maybe about 50 cents or something like that. But that director, a man, raised up on the back. He said, Just a minute, and then he walked up, he got he got to it. He said, Let's think he played this. He said, Maybe he played this song, said the prophet. There is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veil, a sinner plunged beneath the flood, lose all their guilt to stay. Then when he had laid it down there, wasn't a dry eye in that place. Who will offer them 5,000, another person said 10,000, and it was priceless. Why? The old master of the violin has revealed his true quality. Oh, brother, my sister, let the master of the word, the word of God, who wrote it, the great Holy Spirit, raise him up with his bow, with love, and pull it across your heart. There is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from a man as well. You will see the full value. You will see the unfair God come right in the view. That's right. That's just the same as he was. He still fell on the day of Pentecost upon the people. Hallelujah. Emptied right into it. That's right. You say, but Abraham, 
I've tried. I've done this. I have done that. Oh, one day, I was having a meeting at Carlsbad, New Mexico. And we went down there in the big old, big old den out there. It was kind of spooky looking. And we looked down there. And the man, he got down there. And he, and he snapped his right off. And he said, oh my, you, you can imagine how dark it is. It's just so dark, you can feel it. And that's just about the way many times I get it. When we see churches that fail to recognize God's word, when you see our daughters of Zion doing the way they are doing, when you see brothers smoking, drinking, telling dirty jokes and things, and still trying to hold their confession in Christ, oh man, it's dark, it's dark, it's big dark. When you see the sign of his coming, there be always darkest just before day. Then the morning star comes to the hell day, having held it, and show that it's coming now. In there, when the town of all, the little girls begin to scream the voice. There was a little boy standing on the rock guard, and the guard, when he snapped the light off, and the little sister was just about to have her feet, she was screaming, jumping and jumping. Oh, what's going on? What next? What's the matter? What's the matter? You know, he screamed, he said, don't fear, little sister. There's a man here who can turn on the light. Listen, sister, you might think we are small in minority, but don't fear. There's a man here who can turn on the light. That's the Holy Spirit. You believe it? Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name. Of the living God. You love the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. That's the message of the hour Amen. to the believer. The mighty God is unveiled before our very eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the fullness of God, we find that God in all ages had a skin on it. You see, when the little boy was saying, I want God with a skin on it, the prophet said, Now, is God in man? The fullness of God in the Godhead bodily, in the entire church, manifesting himself, fulfilling his word. Now, we find that God in all ages has had skin on it. See, we find that God in all ages has got skin on it. What is he saying? God always has a representation in the form of a person, a human being. That's the skin he has on him. Hallelujah. He manifested himself in the message of the hour. A human being walked the face of the earth and proved that God is present. Hallelujah. Glory. What for is for you and I to believe. Only believe. All things are possible. And so we sing a song. Only believe. You come believing, you go receiving. Amen. Hallelujah. Whatsoever you have in your heart, it's more than able to give it to you and I. Because he promised to do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. Amen. We have a message. Message of the hour. Hallelujah. Take the message to heart. Shall do you and I good. You love him? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The message of God. It is God being mighty yet unveiled before our eyes. Hallelujah. The prophet also told the story of this man. He said he went down somewhere to church and came back. And they asked him, do you want down to worship with those nuts? Hallelujah. Do you want down to worship with those nuts? The man said, yeah, I did. He said, because if you use an automobile, like a car, for an example, if you take out the nuts in a car, the car becomes a young car. Hallelujah. If you take out the knots, it becomes a young. The guy cannot stand. So we are the knots of God. Hallelujah. We are the knots that God used to hold this world in place. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. Are you happy to be a knot for God? I am a knot for God. And he also told a story in the message of a man walking down in California. And in front of his shed, he said, I am a fool for Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And when the man walked past you, you look behind him and he said, Whose fools are you? Amen. Hallelujah. Because you have to be a fool for somebody. If you're not a fool for Christ, you're a fool for somebody else. 
I want to remain a fool for Christ. Do you? Thank you, Lord. Let's be on our feet. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is a fountain filled with blood drawn from the man man's bed. Give us that song. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from a man man's bed. Heaven and sin that was bedded that flow flows on your guilty
So when my name is called, I will be somewhere. If Christ doesn't come before I go, I just want to answer, Lord, I am here. Hallelujah. And as you had on Friday, it doesn't matter what happened to the skin. They are still alive, even in the bone. Hallelujah. I saw on the, on the news on the internet the other day, there was a woman that passed away. I think they said that she's a, a, a nun of a, a Roman Catholic nun or something. But you know, like the prophet said, you know, denomination cannot hold anyone. There are people in some places that are truly good Christians. They're just bound by some denomination. But the prophet said, God can even go there and pull them. You don't know who they are. So that's why we don't judge anyone. But it was on the news that this sister died about three years ago. You can search on the internet, it's there, I believe. He died three years ago, and somehow they went to exhume her body because they want to bury her somewhere else. So when they did, her body was still intact. Intact, including her shoes and her clothes. Nothing was touched. Her body was intact. They were now viewing it somewhere in the United States. They put a, put the body up. I was showing my kids. They were showing the body and they closed it and people are now coming to look at it. Look at her. For three years, nothing happened to her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You see now, there are certain things God will show you that they, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I could be down there and everything would just be intact. Hallelujah. Amen. Just waiting for my name. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't disturb me because I'll be waiting for my name. But I know I'm not down there because I'm up. Hallelujah. The body is down there, but we know where our soul is. Yeah. Our soul goes beyond the cutting of time. Because the prophet saw us there, worshiping God. Hallelujah. Yeah. But when my name is called, I will go and pick up that body. Hallelujah. Yeah. Picking up that body. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's what God told Ezekiel. Son of man, shall these dry bones rise again? He said, speak to them. And when Ezekiel spoke, the Bible said, flesh came upon them. Hallelujah. And the wind was coming from east, west, north, and south, and there was life in those bones. And they began to come together. It was a mighty sound upon the valley because the voice of God spoke, and there's life in those bones. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God has spoken to our bone. There's life in this bone, and there's nothing the devil can do. Let's just keep pressing on. I'm worried about what happens every day. God has got the day under control. Just trust in Him. Trust and obey. Hallelujah. Can you give me that some trust and obey? There's no other way. Only to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. Trust and obey. When we, when we walk with the light, in the light of His world, what a glory He shall on our way. While we do His good will,
that trust in his word and obey in his word. We have the word of God for today. Today, that's the message of the hour. Hallelujah. He has been vindicated. He has been proven to be true. When you hear the voice of God through that tale, it is God through speaking through a badger scanner, through the skin of a human being. It was God speaking. The same way he spoke in a badger skin in the days of Moses. The same way he rested on the mercy seat in the days of Moses and Aaron. The same way he spoke to Noah. The same way he spoke to Job. He's the same way he spoke to the bride. In the body of his prophet, it was God speaking. That's why we stand on the message. What the message said to do, you just do. That's why we're not a denomination. We're not running from church to church. That's why we know we are predestinated. Because if you are here on the days of Moses, if you don't listen to Moses, you will not make it. If you were here on the days of Noah, you don't listen to Noah, you will not make it. And they did not listen. Only Noah and three of his sons and his wife, they are listening. And then the other son, there were only eight that were saved at that time. Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their three wives. Only eight were saved. Hallelujah. On the day of Abraham, how many were saved when Lot had to escape? Only four, one turned into salt. Only three. And Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. It was the shortest sermon Jesus ever preached. Remember Lot's wife. That's it. Hallelujah. Why is Jesus reminding of Lot's wife? We have escaped from this world. Don't go back. Shall we pray? Almighty God, the giver of everything good, in humility of spirit we have worshipped, in newness of heart we have worshipped, in pureness of heart we have worshipped, we have read the message of the hour. We have eaten the message in our heart. We have sung songs of Zion. Though we be few, but our Lord God has made us to be in the surplus. You have fulfilled every number. Because it's all about you. It's not all about nobody else. It's all about Jesus Christ. Your presence. When Paul and Silas were in jail, there were only two. But you were there to worship with them. And so, Lord, it gives me courage to know that whatever comes and goes, whoever comes and goes, I just keep my eyes on thee. And all that has given to me to worship with me, Lord, that will be here. But whenever we come, Lord, we come to celebrate Jesus. We come to speak about you, Lord. It's not about what you have done. It's not about no man that has done. Because you are the fullness of God. God is sometimes spoke from the mouth of his prophet. And when his son Jesus, who was manifested in flesh, that he was the fullness of God. He was God incarnated in man. He was the fullness of God in man. It was God of the man. And that man was Jesus Christ, who was God, but became flesh to be one of us. And we can be redeemed, that he can pay the price that we could not pay. Oh, thank you for the price you have paid. Thank you for the finished work you have done. Thank you for the joy you have given. Thank you for the life you have given. Thank you for liberty you have given. For where the Spirit of God is, there's liberty. We claim that liberty this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. We claim liberty for our spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. We claim liberty for our health in the mighty name of Jesus. We claim liberty for our children in the mighty name of Jesus. We claim liberty for our family in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless God for all the fathers. 
May you continue to bless the fathers. May the fathers continue to love their wife as the Lord Jesus Christ has loved the church. May they have the wisdom to love their family. May you continue to strengthen every father. It is the father's day. May the fathers truly remember today to know that God loved them, to worship God in their spirit and in their heart and in their soul, that we have liberty to be with them. May you worship God, all ye that are sons and daughters of God. May you worship your God, all ye that are called of the people of God. May you worship your God. May our soul find a perfect resting place in the name of Jesus Christ. My Lord, my God, you that gave the message of the hour, you that gave us the prophet, prophet did not come in vain. There is a people that was ready to hear from the prophet. And when we heard the voice, we said, it is God speaking to us. It was God speaking through that badger skin. The same way you spoke to Moses, behind the veil. You came behind the veil. You spoke through the veil. And this day, of Jesus, your spirit is unleashed upon the bride. That the bride can be where the bridegroom is. May your spirit and give us. May your spirit be in us. May your spirit live in us. May your spirit abide in us. May you never depart from us. May you always be there according to your promise. So the world will see you no more. We are going to see you because you're going to be in us. Lord Jesus, we love you. We love you, God, because you first love us. We couldn't come to where you are. You came down to where we are. Oh, what a mighty God you are. What a loving Father. What a loving Jesus. Oh, bless him in the name of the Lord. Lord, we pray for those who travel. And you give them journey mercy. And you have called journey mercy to them. Those who could not come long, you be with them. Those who have not seen for a long time, and you be with them. We that continue to come, and you bless us. You bless every family. Brother Anthony, Brother Solomon, Sister Rosemary, Sister Rose, and my children, Lord, myself before you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you for the fellowship you gave us today, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. Thank you for the good help, Lord. Thank you for everything, Lord. As the week is before us, Lord, you help us, Lord. You help us, Lord. We cannot do anything without you. Give us the strength to persevere. Give us the courage to endure. Give us the mind to think. The mind of Christ being lost, Lord. Say, if this mind that was in Christ be in you, who thought it not wrongly to be compared to God, if that mind of Christ be in us, Lord, we will pick in every mother vessel, we will live and not die, we will declare the glory of God in the mind of the living, that we know that we are your children, for we call you our Father. Oh, blessed be thy holy name. We love you, Lord. Thank you for being our God and our Lord. With thanksgiving, we pray. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless you. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.